are a lot of issues affecting Anna Johnson's Charleston County District, from I-526 to development. I speak exclusively with the Councilwoman for a special edition of Quintus Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quintus Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Councilwoman Anna Johnson, it is so good to see you. Great to see you too. I appreciate it greatly. I know just recently you sent me a text message with a flyer and you talked about a couple of things that you wanted to talk about here on Quentin's Close Ups. You said that you want to talk about issues in District 8, clean drinking water, growth, infrastructure, African American history, community sustainability, and preservation. Where do you want to go in your mind first? Well, I can talk about uh, the W. Gresham Maggard. Uh school that uh, we've just got, Charleston County got this grant to do oral history right. and uh, uh, that was an event that I thought was uh, very successful in attendance and so we talked about the uh, equalization schools so equalization schools were schools that was created back um, in uh, 1953 you know just prior to integration um, Governor Burns uh, made an effort to have separate but equal schools built uh, in Charleston County. And W. Gresham Mega was one of those schools at the time. What is the state of education, particularly in rural schools these days? Well, I, you know, even though we had equalization schools back in 53, uh, to prevent uh, integration at the time, um, I think the, uh, the quality of uh, education for blacks is still pretty much the same. You know, back then, people were, were trying to get uh, equal education because they felt like they weren't getting, uh, you know, the proper books and uh, having the uh, place to the building, sure. you know, equal uh, for, for the children to learn and everything. Uh, but here today, and we look at um, the state of education in Charleston, well, in South Carolina, and we're probably what forty-eight. We we stay between. We harbor between forty-eight and forty-nine. Still, this time of day, why is that? And I know you're asking why is it still a problem with getting clean drinking water in the rural areas? That's oh well, that's a problem also. And uh, of course, um, uh, Mount Pleasant was had uh, a group. You know, recently, I think it was in the Snowden area. Right that was uh, complaining about not being able to connect to uh, public water uh, through Charleston, uh, through Mount Pleasant uh, Water Works. And uh, on James Island, we have the same thing. John's Island, we have people asking uh, to, to be connected to uh, public water sources. One lady calls me, um, she was taking a shower and her pump went dry. And uh, at that time, now she had to scramble to be able to get you know, water because she said she had already changed her, her well uh, twice. And so now the water was not coming, so she had to connect to public water. What are those sources right now that you're seeking for those people in James and John's Island? Well, luckily uh, with this particular uh, uh, family, um, they were able to connect, you know, really quick within 30 days with the uh, Charleston water system. Okay. And so I've, uh, this has prompted me to look at some other areas. Uh, you know, we have a lot of donut holes uh, in, in Charleston County where people are still in unincorporated areas. Oh, yes. and, and so they may not have, you know, had the water brought in their area or probably when it did come through in some areas, um, some people didn't tap in because they had a well. But they're finding out that the well can go dry. You talk about, obviously, areas in Charleston County. i got to talk to you about growth. Where are we headed as far as growth in your mind? Growth is coming. I, I don't see that. Uh, we can't stop the growth. However, um, we control it through our zoning. And in Charleston County, we have uh, you know, average four houses uh, to an acre. Versus, you know, the city may have eight per acre. And um, and just to give a good comparison about this, I've noticed that on James Island, where we had uh, less housing on per acre, you know, 
if it was a half, half an acre, one house for a half an acre. Uh, if families, when they sell the property, and and they might annex into the city, the new owner, right. well, now they're allowed to put in more housing on that uh, acreage, which causes a problem because uh, where you only had one house, now somebody may be able to put three houses there or four houses there. And so you got a drainage problem. That's now developing. And, I, and I'm seeing that all over, uh, you know, in pocketed areas on James Island in particular, where this is happening, that the land, you know, is turning over and the new owners, they go into the city. And so this is, this is what happens. You have an increase of uh, the density right there. And um, it's not always, um, in my judgment, you know, a real positive thing because we have the drainage may not be working out okay. as well as it was when it was just the one house there. One house there. Obviously, when you talk, but we are Go ahead. we are working with the city now. I have city. to get say this okay. that uh, uh, now the city is trying to work, you know, and with the county uh, to to help deal with those uh, drainage um, situations that may be occurring because of something like that. What I mean, drainage issues are coming to your mind right now? particularly in Charleston County. Well, I know that there's some other drainage uh, uh, situations. Uh, we do have more rainfall coming now than we used to have before. And the ditches that uh, carry the waters, well, one thing that has changed is those ditches used to go through farmland. So we no longer have the farmland. And we're collecting more water, you know, more rain. And, and so where's the water going? As we are building, you know, like you mentioned about the growth, well, some of those uh, houses are being put on properties where there used to be a drainage ditch. Now, people go and close the ditch up, and when they close those ditches up, the water is not able to flow all the way through to uh, the reservoir that it used to go to. It's going to the river, wherever, wetlands. Right. So um, uh, that is a problem that we are also, you know, having to look at. How do you protect wetlands right now in 2019? That's a good question. I wish I had the answer to that because I was just talking with someone. Uh, we know that uh, in some areas people are able to uh, get a permit to fill in uh, wetlands. That's, I don't think, in my judgment, that's not a great idea. Because when we start closing up those wetland areas, I mean, where is the water supposed to go? You know, they, we had a Tremendous flooding uh, about two years ago okay. um, with uh, Matthews right. and on Main Road. And so that area is being filled in <sighs> too much. And I know a lot of people are saying it's too much infrastructure in Charleston County. How do we get here in your mind? How do we get to? Infrastructure. Too much of it in some people's mind. Well, I don't think um, the infrastructure... As far as uh, roads, we're not building a lot of new roads. Some places we need to have uh, a new highway, but uh, I don't see that we're um, overbuilding with that. Not right now. In fact, with the growth, maybe we don't have enough roads. And of course, uh, with 526, that's one of those infrastructure that was uh, has been prolonged for a long time that uh, I believe is needed. And uh, it's over, well overdue. You talk about 526. Obviously, the Charleston County Council basically said, hey, we're going to continue with this, despite what's going on with the committees up in Columbia. When you look at 526 now, where does your mind go to? Um, I think that we should continue with 526. We don't, I don't see that we have a lot of choices um, to get people off of the islands. And uh, this highway will allow for people to have another way off of the islands. I know that Elliot Summit basically said that the county spent $3 million just recently to with the project as far as 526. And I was talking with Jen, Jenny Honeycutt and Bradley Moody just recently for Quintus Close Ups, and they're saying that many of those invoices are going to different places. Where exactly is the money going in your mind? Where is the money going as far as the, free, uh, the, the permits? Yes, sir. Yes, um, well, you know, uh, we have continued on with the progress of 526. 
and permitting takes a long time okay. to acquire. So uh, obtaining uh, the permits is a good thing uh, to con continue with. I am in agreement, agreement with that, as well as uh, uh, acquiring right away is when it's time to do that. So anything that uh, the Transportation Department feels like we need to continue moving forward on so that we don't lose grounds when we finally get to the point that 526 is definitely put on the map as far as the uh, project for everybody and all of the bickering and fighting is over with, we can go forward. Okay, how do you expect to go forward? Where is the money? I have a lot of confidence in our financial okay. department okay. to get us the money that we need to move 526 forward. Uh, they have assured us that they think that we are able to do that. It, uh, the money will not be coming from one source, and I understand that. So wherever they can find that uh, source, whether it's uh, through some of Charleston County's money uh, and some state monies, you know, we've already spent um, some millions of dollars on projects for the state of South Carolina. How much money does Charleston County have right now? How much money we have as far as? 526 right now. Uh, I don't have the, okay. the amount of exactly where that, you know, what that total is because it's not like we're just sending the money okay. in one place. Okay. But identifying where we can get the money. I know there have been great efforts with our financial department to identify where some of those monies could be coming from. Could it be from the old half sales sales tax? Some of that is from the half cent sales tax, yes. Okay, let me turn over to the Naval Hospital. Obviously, Charleston County Council approved, appropriated is $6 million to knock down the old Navy Hospital. And obviously, uh, you all obviously voted just recently Six million uh, to spend six six million dollars. That is to knock down the old naval hospital. And according to Channel Five, it says this: the Shakura Life Group had an agreement with the city of North Charleston and Charleston County to lease and develop the building. However, County Council voted to pull out the lease in 2016 after Shakura failed to have the building ready by the deadline. What was the deadline? You know, I hate to be talking a long time okay. about. Five, about the uh, oh. Naval Hospital. Okay. Uh, to me, at this point, it doesn't matter how we got to where we are. We are here. And we are here at the point where what do we do with the building that we've already purchased? We are trying to, yes, knock it down. It's supposed to be demolished. And we want to build a new building. And in the new building, we still want to carry out those same plans that we had before, which was to bring our state agencies there, social service agency uh, in that uh, building, and also uh, an opportunity for a grocery store for the people in that area. That was, that was the original intent. We haven't, we haven't changed from that. What do, you so, say, what do you say to those taxpayers who have to fit this bill? Well, those taxpayers are getting benefits in other ways. That's yes. We just got through talking about uh, things like uh, infrastructure that we're dealing with. Um, you know, one person doesn't pay for one particular thing. Okay. We are spending our money. So, so if we're helping you on this side with one project, then you're helping on this side with another project. We talked about uh, cleaning of, uh, well, the ditches or right. drainage, for instance. Right. Uh, some monies are put uh, in different places. And so with the, um, the benefit of uh, people in, 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 in Charleston County going to the Naval Hospital, guess what? I've recommended that we looked at uh, affordable housing being put on that piece of property. Okay. And so people from all around who qualify if we put a housing uh, development there, they would be able to take advantage of that. What would so, an affordable housing look like there? Well, I don't know what it would look like now. Okay. okay. But I think that uh, with the uh, 
uh, acreage that we have, that would be one of the places we could address the issue that's a Charleston County wide issue for affordable housing. Anybody could use that. And that would be your money and my money included in that. Let me stay on the money because obviously in the 526, there were so many estimates about how much it would cost ultimately. Where are we now with that estimation in your mind? Well, the last estimation I heard was $750 million. And so uh, is that uh, what it is uh, cost today or is that uh, cost that has was filled out over a period of time? I can't tell you exactly what it is today, okay. but that's that's, you know, the last uh, cost that I heard. And so uh, you're still trying to figure out, well, well how are we going to get uh, this extra 300 uh, plus million from various sources, as I said before. And you just mentioned uh, the sales, half, the old half cent sales tax right. is one. And, and there are guide share uh, monies out there. Okay. 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 Yes. Now, what, let me go back to what you said earlier. I know, obviously, you want to talk about, you know, community sustainability and whatnot. Oh, yes. Where are we with that in your mind? Well, um, there are different components of how you uh, sustain a community. Okay. And so, uh, while we have um, old communities, I'd like to see those old communities uh, revitalized. And in that, you know, we mentioned water. Right. Bringing uh, portable water in the area. A uh, long time ago, yes, it was okay to have a pump and or well, but uh, we're in a new time now. And so those communities, I think uh, uh, we help them to build new uh, infrastructure like with the water. Okay. Uh, doing that with roads instead of just having a, a, a dirt road that uh, people are not accessible. Then um, I had a lot of road projects where we have um, paved the roads, the community roads. How many are you talking about? Well, Charleston County, uh, when I first came on, they talked about having 300 dirt roads. That's a lot to me. So I've worked to try to decrease that every year. And obviously you talked about the time when you first came on council. Obviously you were just reelected in November. What is it like for you to be back on county council as a member? Well, I do want to finish up some projects, definitely, um, uh, including um, the 526. Okay. Uh, there is one road I'm thinking about right now in on Eddie Stewana, Shell House Road. Uh, the people over there, I went and talked to uh, uh, some of the residents, and they were uh, begging to have their, uh, the road paid for a long time. And they're looking forward to that road being paid this year. This year? Yes. And what else can we expect from your district this year? Also, we have uh, two libraries that's being built in the district, mm -hmm. um, the Baxter Patrick James Allen Library, uh, and also uh, St. Paul's mm -hmm. Library. So now those libraries um, I'm excited about because uh, we have the really uh, bigger and better state-of-the-arts library that people will be able to not only just get books, and videos. Right. They'll have uh, live conferences that they can use the conference room oh, to yes. uh, gain information from. Right. And uh, use uh, the computers in the rooms. Uh, they have a computer section there. People who are looking for jobs, they're going to be able to go and access those uh, computers. A lot of people still don't have uh, computers. And sometimes, you know, the programs are changing so fast, people are not keeping up with that. But they can go to the library and use the library resources for that. So I'm really excited about uh, seeing the Baxter Patrick uh, open this year. I think that's uh, due somewhere around uh, August. Oh, wow. And um, uh, St. Paul's, that also should be, uh, I think, uh, November. November. Yes. I know you're excited about these new library projects, but I got to take you to the James Allen Library. Why is the controversy there? Well, I'd like to know why that's a question this time myself, when we're already uh, talking about getting ready to open 
the new library. I don't think uh, that should be a question because the referendum uh, was to build five new libraries. And so Jamestown was to be replaced. So I, I don't see why there's a question about that. What is your question to the James Allen Town Council? My question about the library yes, to them? Yes, ma'am. Uh, because of their uh, resolution? Well, yes, they definitely have some reservations, but you know, the library is there. Well, uh, I'm not sure what they're uh, really trying to do with that because they did not uh, want to pay for maintaining the staff there. Uh, the county did offer if they wanted the building, we're saying uh, you we will let you have the building for a dollar a year. So so we're not stopping the town of James Island if they want to operate the library there. A library a there. Library. A library there. But Charleston County, I don't think it's fair uh, for us to go back and, and now uh, maintain the library that we just said in a referendum that we wanted to replace, which we are replacing with a much bigger and better library. And it's only about two and a half miles from the smaller library. James Allen has uh, access within six, about six minutes. They can go to uh, the Folly Beach Library. Uh, now you have the Baxter Patrick Library. You have the South Windermere Library, and you can go across the connector to the main library. So, to me, I mean, that's really, that's, that's really over the top there. Uh, and then we have some areas, like on Wadmala, right. that has no library. What are you going to do about that? I'd like to try to get a library over there. And I think it would be good to uh, try to get, if we have some extra money, to look at putting something on Guatemala. Um, Eddie Stowe Island, they don't have a lot. Well, they have a small library in the church. We need to be thinking about how we're going to expand that opportunity. So it's not just about, I mean, making a library accessible every five or six minutes. If we did that, we Charleston County would be uh, spending a tremendous amount of money to build and maintain libraries. Well, if you were to look inside the Charleston County budget, what would you take out to help these people who are needing libraries? I'm sorry, that's a typical, very difficult okay. uh, question there. Because uh, who would want to cut what? What would you want to cut? That's, I mean, services that you're already offering is very difficult to change, to reduce, to drop off the list. Anna Johnson, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. I've enjoyed being here and talking with you. Thank you, Quintus Bullsocks. <laughs> thank you.